we're just going to talk a little bit about young people's participation um, around education and show you a little bit of a film that we've been making around the issue. Um, I'm just going to give you a little overview of what we've been doing. I guess about a year and a half ago, um, started looking around at all the kind of consultation that has been done around current government education policy and realised that there's very, very little that has actually been done with young people. And my work normally is as a children's rights worker and what I've noticed as a general trend is that participation work has kind of become much less of a priority over the last few years mm -hmm. and that a lot of the big organisations that represented young people had their funding cut or just don't exist anymore or kind of reduced down a lot or have very specific projects that they do but there's not a lot of work being done just to get young people's views on important issues so we thought it was really important that that space was created and that young people were supported to tell us what they thought about what was happening and what they wanted to happen. So I met Malachi and Ruben and we started designing a project and we were trying to think about ways of explaining to people what we thought was going on but also finding out what other young people thought and we came up with the idea of making a film. So what we're going to show you today is a few little clips of the film that isn't completely finished yet and then a longer section um, of the end so you can kind of get a sense of what we're really trying to do with it and then we'll take some questions. Um, I think first of all, uh, Ruben and Malachi are just going to tell you a little bit about what we actually did and how we made the film and why they wanted to be involved in the first place. Um, so we're brothers um, and we're interested in many things politically but I guess what interested us in the project was to actually hear the thoughts and feelings of young people of how they feel about school. Um, this question has actually never been asked before which we realised a lot more when we start asking people. Um, so we decided to go up to Newcastle with Lucy um, and see some different examples of teaching and um, see young people who share our sort of thoughts and concerns about how education, the education system is. Yeah, I mean, um, we didn't have really a, a swift uh, experience of, this, of the education system and so I um, wasn't really sure as to why that was, maybe the deeper causes as to why that was. And um, now at this project we can uh, ask other young people and find that information to see if they feel similar ways. And um, not just try to uh, make it a negative thing, but there are some people that do enjoy the school and they do, do enjoy it and so balanced questions not just coming from a closed minded point of view, just opening it up. So uh, yeah, we made a documentary together and um, it's still ongoing and we're just really quite excited about what's going to happen. So can we say that about where we went, like what we actually did? So, so we went to, a, went to a place called Scott's River. Um, and uh, we did some rapping and beatbox in there and we also were just doing some interviews there uh, to the young people, asking them questions uh, sort of that might spark off uh, inquisitive ways of thinking that makes sense. Um, questions like, do you think you get educated inside of school or outside of school or both? Or and those, those sort of questions. And, um, we also went to Lawnmowers, which is a, um, a theatre company run by for and run by, by for and it's probably by a mouthful. It's run by people. Um, I'm four people. And four people. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, we went there and we played a few like interactive games with them just to get them started and just, uh, so they felt comfortable with us and we felt comfortable right with them. Um, and then we were sitting down, uh, you know, asking those questions again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Lord Mowers is a theatre company that has an adult and a youth theatre. So we went and we did a workshop with the older theatre group. So that they could train us in how to work with the younger theatre group. So we did quite a lot of kind of 
partnered working and testing out models of participation work so we can take them forward into what we do next, I guess. So I guess we're going to show you a couple of short clips in the beginning and then a longer clip. I hope. I hope. Who's working it? <laughs> Press the button. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're going to show you, well, I'm Josh, by the way, um, <laughs> I'm based in Newcastle, so um, I got involved in the project a little bit after they started, um, but as a contact in another part of the country, so we could hear, so the film could include the voices of young people, in, not just in London, but, so I, yeah, I'm based in Newcastle, I had some contacts in Newcastle with schools and youth clubs, and I used to work at lawnmowers, um, so it felt like I could yeah, open up some doors for, for young people to be involved in, from quite a range of backgrounds as well. So uh, Scottswood is a youth club that is in quite a sort of impoverished part of Newcastle. And then, yeah, it's just a range of different, different sort of social backgrounds that we went and spoke to people from. And, um, yeah, so we'll show you, the film is, is the film is like about an hour long, currently, as a documentary, and we've edited down about 12 minutes into kind of a quite completed form, so we'll show you that. But just before that, we'll just show you a couple of little clips from the rest of the film, so you get a bit of a sense of the narrative. But the film unfolds as our journey unfolded, so it's like we're learning about what it is to ask these questions and seeing... <coughs> what comes up and then that leads us to the next place. It's a bit of a narrative film and you'll get a little bit of a sense of that. Yeah. But yeah, so this first clip is just kind of setting the scene and then there's a little clip of some people speaking at Lord and Lord, and then I'll show you the last clip. I think that in terms of school for me and stuff, it wasn't, I didn't have the, the best experience of it and um, I just like to I know that there's a lot of young people like that as well, guys. Right? Don't have to go into that stuff, that's not going to school. I mean, you don't want to be conditioned in that way, you know? Yeah, so if you get put into cross support, uh, and there's people in cross with extension, people in cross with alcohol, like, you feel, you feel, um, you know, disgusting, you feel horrible, but it's not. I don't think it should be like that. Uh, I, think it, I, I think it's important for young people to um, get their voices heard, uh, because I don't think that happens enough at all. And like I was really saying, people just talk about it and they never, people just point at point and say, this is how it is and stuff, but they never really get the opinions and ideas of the people actually in the situation. So, yeah, uh, I think it's important because every, everyone needs to, that's, that's how we're going to solve anything if we don't all put our minds together and think, you know, think about it from different points, points of view. And everything. I, I really want to get the, the thoughts and opinions of teachers. Most importantly, I think to teachers and young people what they think about school, but outside of the school setting, you know, where they really feel free and comfortable, just talk about what they, what they think, you know what I mean? First of all, we want to. Look, my posh head to the And then 
so yeah, you get a sense. We went to so that was that the last clips there were from from people at lawnmowers. Um, this bit, this bit of the film, which is more sort of completed in, his edit, in the editing, is from Chillingham Road Primary School, which is a school you'll hear from Ben, the headmaster of Chillingham Road, in a minute. Um, but it's a it's a, a primary school in Newcastle, um, very progressive in using the creative arts in all aspects of the curriculum, and um, an inspiring school that we thought it would be interesting to go and see some young people who probably were having quite a positive experience of school and just to hear how it is for them. Um, so here it is. <laughs> We are at Chilling Road Primary School in here in Newcastle. Um, my name is Ben, Ben Russell. Um, I've been the head teacher at Chilling Road since September. These are new waters and we're really just trying to sort of navigate and work out um, you know, the expectation and the possibilities and what impact and influence I can have on these wonderful people who have got responsibilities. Thank you. 
you couldn't play. If you're not the best one, say it was a, yeah. they have made a football tournament or something, yeah. They're like lots of winners and you didn't get a award or something and you yeah, you like the top of those in and like I got one and you didn't. But I think that's not really fair. I think and um, everyone just get like one word for like taking part and just being a good sportsman. Do you like helping students that aren't really in the high tech?
are to do with a model of that learning and achievement that is particular. So a focus on science, science subjects, technology subjects, maths, language, a focus on education as a pathway to a certain kind of employment with a very stratified class based model. You know, we need a certain number of people at this skill level and then a small number of people at this skill level and then you know, we need a few people at the top who've got very high level of skills. So it's a very 19th century kind of Victorian industrial revolution kind of model of what we're supposed to be doing. And I think that's the focus of this government. I think the arts are not even there, frankly. Why should I compromise the experiences of these young people who have the most important stage of their development? Who am I to make those decisions? And why are those who have the power not listening to the fact that these are our most important citizens, these are our future? And it is crucial that we are understanding them now that we are offering opportunities to flower, to blossom, and to ultimately innovate. I mean, to, to move forward, to innovate, to take us to a better future. And it is not my job to stifle that. It is not any system's job to do that. And we're in a very dangerous situation if we feel that's the only path that we can go down. <laughs> Very much how the film did unfold. 
And in the longer film, you hear a lot more of young people speaking. Um, and for me, that was just fascinating in terms of like, okay, maybe we're not going to find answers straight away, but allowing people's voices to have space and to grow and find in themselves what they want and what they want to say felt like a very important step to start making, and I could feel that happening. And it was really interesting, like the four of us working together and getting to know each other, because I didn't know we'd been in Malachi before I got involved in the project. But we formed this like interesting little team, and you know they came up to Newcastle and they hadn't been there before. But we would just move around, and it felt like everywhere we went, people were kind of magnetized towards us and wanted to tell us about themselves. And any time we asked questions about education, it's like floodgates just opened, you know, people wanted to share their experiences so much. And it, so it felt quite clear to us, like, at the beginning it was like, oh, have we got an agenda, you know, is there something that we want people to know about? And it was like, well, certainly we all have our own experiences of school and they, they affect us in particular ways, but Really, and I was totally led by Ruben and Malachi, it was that sense of like, we just want to know what people feel and what they think, and there was a great range of thoughts and feelings, but, but primarily what came out of it for me was that people want to cooperate and they want their voice to be heard, but not so that their idea is the thing that's taken on, so that their voice is meaningful and it's valid and it's part of a conversation, and as soon as that felt like it was happening, it felt like there was so much excitement in the space, you know. So that's what was very inspiring. And in terms of an ongoing project, it feels like there's just a huge amount of potential for sharing, for creating platforms where people can share openly around these, these, these big questions and, yeah, find ways forward. And the film, I think, can be a, a good starting point for discussion and there might be particular areas we could look at in more detail um, if we could do further work with it. But yeah, that's, that's what came up with me. Great, so yeah, that just sort of leads me on really to, um, just very quickly, just to finish. So what we want to do now really is get this version of the film finished and probably do a little bit more fundraising just to get it all really polished. And then we're going to have a parliamentary launch and like lots of young people and lots of policy makers and what we'd like to come out of that is that there's some ongoing relationship between policy makers and this group of young people. And then we think we really want to start building again another national children's rights, young people led organisation that is inclusive and we'll probably start with a focus around education and we've kind of identified six themes that have come out of this year that we want to explore in much more detail. Um, and so we're really looking for ideas for people to come and support us and get involved and help us think, think of ways to sustain the whole thing. Um, I don't think we've got time for Q&A now, but at, no. at the end... Um, then just like, no. <laughs> but uh, at the end, uh, if you've got any thoughts, then please come and grab us. Yeah. Um,